ability. I've got the life of God in me. I've got the love of
the name of Jesus. There is There's something about 
He's faithful. He's faithful. As we were worshiping and um, listening to Cindy um, Jacob, I was um, remembering some things that the Lord has been telling me since like November when we had Holy Convocation. And I think I say this like once a month that when we were having um, official dinner, that one of the prophets at the table told me that God said for us to pray against the plague. And once a month, I, I get up here and I say that. I say, God um, told that prophetess to tell me, to tell us to pray against the plague, right? And so I just want to, you know, you know, now we know, you know, what God meant when he said that in November. Um, so, um, you know, God has given us power and authority over all this stuff. The Bible says that it's under our feet. Amen. 
So we got to make sure that we just stay on top of it, that we take authority over it. That in like uh, over in that video, we heard about like HIV and AIDS, like 400,000 people. Like you don't hear about AIDS anymore, people dying from AIDS. You don't hear that or malaria or, or um, it was just a whole lot of stuff like TB, right? Like hundreds of thousands of people over the last few years passing away from that. But just want to remind us, um, you know, that's something I, I know every Wednesday I, I bind up the spirit of murder. I bind up the spirit of suicide. I bind up the spirit of depression. I bind up like lawlessness, these crazy people running people down in the street. But I'm going to put that on my prayer list because I know for sure God, he, he had that lady tell me that at the table. And once a month, I remember to say it, but it's got to be much more. It's got to be serious to me. Amen. And so I, I thank God for that. I thank God for that. I thank God. And then I want to say that, um, you know, for a couple years now, God has been telling us, I don't know what God is saying at a whole lot of other ministries, but God has been saying to us, spend time with me. Amen. And the more we spend time with God, the more we become like God, the more we walk in his power and we walk in his authority. Amen. And so, again, God is telling us to spend time with us, with him. And then... Um, Recently, I want to say like three or four months ago, Pastor Barb started prophesying that God wanted us to plead the blood. Plead the blood, the blood, the blood, the blood. Amen. So remember that there's power in the blood of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. And then most recently, the Lord has been telling us about the power and praise throughout our day. That we just can't praise him here when we come together. But we have, a, have to live a lifestyle of praise, a lifestyle of worship. Amen. Hallelujah. And then I want to share that um, God is quickly confirming his word. Like Sunday, all those words came forth. And then um, I guess it was on Monday when Bishop heard Cindy Jacobs, that this uh, video that we just watched. And, but if y'all remember, Minister Tia said that she saw some flags, the United States flags and different flags around the world. And, and one by one, God was, I think she said, prophesied, that God was collapsing them and one flag was going to rise up. And that's what I saw when those um, people were coming together, when the Asians and the African Americans and the white people were coming together in the video. Amen. Forgiveness is a powerful thing, Amen. especially when the church is the one who initiated. When God say, Amen. people of God, ask for forgiveness because for, your brothers and sisters have been offended. You've overlooked them and you wronged them. And when we obey God, things happen like Really good things happen. And then um, um, I want to say maybe this past Sunday when Minister Tia was prophesying, she talked about walls falling. Walls fall, falling. And you heard that in the video. And I, I did security today. Hallelujah. One of my favorite things to do because I get to meet people, right? And um, while I was doing security, it was it's a guy there who was helping restore the building. We're at, Dur at Durfee. And so the building is being restored. And so he's a Christian, a born again, baptized in the Holy Ghost believer. And I think God put us places to hear things on purpose for, for, for a reason, right? So um, and some he talked to me for a long time. For, um, he told me how he and his wife came here. Um, he didn't say what state they came from, but three years ago, his wife was on, um, on the Internet, and she came across some stuff about the city of Detroit, and it just, like, it shook her. And she began to weep and to cry. And, and he talked about when he came home from work, his wife was just messed up about what's going on in the city of Detroit. And then a few months later, I guess it was, the Lord said that I'm moving in, in the city of Detroit. I'm doing a new thing there. Do you want to be part of it? And if you want to be part of that, get to the city of Detroit. He said, I picked up my eight children, my wife, and we immediately moved to the city of Detroit. But he was telling me that God is doing some stuff in the families in the city of Detroit. And you heard that in that video, that God is restoring families. Amen. So God, everything God promised to do, he is doing. Yeah. The church got to stay focused. When the Bible, God said, my sheep... Hear my voice. In the voice of a stranger, they won't follow. So when we hear God say something, we don't all hear, hear the same thing. I know y'all know that's obvious by um, when me and Bishop and I went to that funeral. Was it yesterday or Monday? Anyhow. Um, yesterday. Okay. <clears throat> At the funeral, um, the auntie of the 18-year-old who passed away, she, um, she shared a story and this is what I got from it. Bishop will tell y'all what he got from it. And um, December the 1st of two, 2019, she had a dream. And she had a dream that something bad was going to happen in her family. And so she prayed, and she was believing God, believing God. And then a couple days ago, she get this phone call. 
that her nephew has passed away, 18 years old, from a heart attack. And she started, like, warring with God, saying no. Because, you know, you, we, we hear about people bringing the dead back, right? So she said, I, I'm, I'm standing face-to-face, toe-to-toe with God, saying, God, not so. This is all not be. And then in her being angry with God, God said, I'm sovereign, right? And so in, in that whole thing, God was telling her how important family is. And then today, this young man comes up to me and tells me that God moved, picked him and his whole family up, moved them to the city of Detroit because God is doing a new thing in the city of Detroit, and God is blessing families. Amen. So I just want to just encourage you that we are on the right path. Amen. As I say that, I remember Apostle Binion like two years ago, three years ago, he came here on a Wednesday, and he said, God has called this to be a house of prayer. Remember that? And this will remain a house of prayer. God wants us to pray. God keep reminding new covenant of peace. No matter what happens, we got to stay focused. We got to pray. And we got to hear from God and say whatever God is saying. Because when we say what God is saying, things manifest. Things are changing. People are hearing about the city of Detroit all over the world about how God is transforming this place. So I just want to thank God tonight for his faithfulness. Amen. God is doing a new thing, not just in the city of Detroit, but the prayers that we pray in this house, let me tell you, they're going to impact the world. Amen? Because we're going to be praying for China. We got a, a sister named Ray in Japan. She, she sent us a picture yesterday. She got one of those masks on. They're being touched by this epidemic too, right? But we have the power as one. God said, my people, when we are one, that nothing is impossible unto us. Amen. So let's believe, God, that we're going to put this thing to death. Amen. And it won't ra- rise up his ugly head ever again in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right. It's testimony times. We have a testimony come up, and you can get the microphone. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <coughs> Thank you, Lord. Amen. Uh, God is good. Um, I just thank the Lord. Um, back in the back, back in last year on May, um, I really don't want to say her name, but she, if she's watching, she's going to know who I'm talking about. Anyway, it's my granddaughter. Uh, anyway, had an accident. And uh, and then she, there, we had got a rental car, and somebody hit the rental car. So I had to pay a we we had to pay a five hundred dollar deductible on the rental car, and Enterprise said that our insurance company would give us the five hundred dollars back. Well, I called the insurance company, and the way they talked, like we weren't gonna get five hundred dollars back. I said, well, oh well, that's a, I didn't pay it, so you know, I forgot all about it. I didn't even think of no more about it. I just you know kept going. Uh, well, the insurance, uh, my insurance called me and they, she, she took, she told me to call her back and I called her back and she said that they owe, she said, asked me, she said, didn't you pay a $500 deductible, uh, to enterprise for the rental car? I said, yes, I did. She said, well, we owe you a check of $500. We're going to send it to you. And I'm like, oh, okay. Cause I forgot all about it, but. The the thing is, I just thank the Lord because, you know, when you don't get upset about anything or you get frustrated about anything and you just put in God's hands and complete, completely forget about it, because that's how surely I just completely forgot about it, then God move on your behalf, even though sometimes he don't move right away. I know this is almost a year. That was last year. But still, it comes and I was thinking about when a lot of pastors and prophets say um, the re- canker worm, you know, it's gonna, God is going to restore everything that the canker worm has stolen. And now I know in my spirit there's more out there that belongs to us. Yeah. You know, I believe it and I expect it. I've been believing that even before, even before this happened with the $500. Yeah. I'm saying there is some more out there that people owe us. Yeah. Because they owe us, and we don't know anything about it. Uh, thinking about the Detroit city taxes of our houses, that I just found out that they have overcharged yes. us. Yes. So 
I'm just walking expectation. I'm thinking of, I'm thanking for that money for our, my, our home. We've been living in our home for over 30 something years. So, you know, I just thank the Lord that everywhere um, money is owed back to us, shall come back to us, even though we're not thinking about it. It, it, you know, and sometimes we, it just, it's, it just suddenly, I like that word, just suddenly it happens and it falls into our lap. Because we are, we belong to him, he covers his people, he loves his people, and so he blesses his people. Amen? Amen. I just want to thank God because um, I read Hebrews Hebrews chapter 11 a lot, you know, because, you know, I've just been working on developing my faith and my relationship with God. And so um, Monday or Tuesday, one of them days, um, I was reading it per usual. and But this time it was like a difference because this time it was like he just opened it up to me in a way he's never done before. And as I'm reading, because he wanted me, so he put on my heart to like put out a word of encouragement, make a video and put it on Facebook. That's not my thing. You know, it's totally out of my comfort zone. So I struggled with it for a while, you know, and I'm like, oh, no, no. So then uh, I was praying, but I've still kept reading. So it's like he just had me put on my heart to read Jeremiah. I was reading Jeremiah, but I was looking for a specific scripture. Mm -hmm. But then when I read chapter one at the beginning, it was literally like he was talking to me. Just start, things just started unfolding about my mouth and what he called me to do, and then I was reading he Hebrews, and I'm like, oh, my goodness. They are no, literally no different from me. Only difference is God told them something when he told me something, and they did it by faith, and then he moved. So it gave me the courage to go ahead and this morning do what he told me to do, even though I was still a little nervous. I was like, I'm going to do it because I told you. Because yesterday I told him, I said, um, I'm going to do it. I said, I'm going to do it tomorrow. So this morning came, and I was like, okay, I'm going to do it. And uh, But I did it. And after I did it, I felt so good. But I felt good because it really made the rest of my day. I was walking with, like, with a little hop in my step, and I was like, God, you know. And it, because going through this, I just felt more and more in love with him, and my relationship with him becoming more real. He's becoming real. I talk to him about everything and anything. And I pray about anything and everything. If I see something in just that, but I would pray about that. I'm talking to God about that. I don't like that. And so, um, so it's just been exciting. And so I just want to thank God that he, um, he, you know, he just, he just started to show me things and let me know that I really am with you. And I really, you not by yourself. I'm not going to see you out there and make you look stupid. You know what I'm saying? So, um, so I just want to thank God for that. Like I said, I was smiling the whole day. I was just so happy my whole day. And I was, but the happiness and the joy I felt was just because I pleased God and I knew I pleased him and it just made my day. Hallelujah. Amen. That's why we're here. Amen. Amen. To please him. Hallelujah. Well, anybody else got a testimony? Yes. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Well, I want to give honor to God who is ahead of my life and who brought me here tonight. And I was watching the um, video, and they was talking about a lot of things that I pray about as far as family getting together. And then Pastor Val came up here and said the same thing that I pray about because, you know, family is just so distant. They only come around when, I don't like to say this, but they only come around for normal time or when it's time to eat. They don't just come by just because... I just come to visit you. I I just want to see how you doing. Family don't do that. So me and my wife, we just, that's my wife over there. <laughs> we we always touching and agreeing on, on, on things like that because it's just so distance. And, and every time the family is, is, is it become distance, my grandkids and, you know, family just, little kids just get tossed around. And... And so I just want everybody just, you know, just to keep us up in prayer because it, the enemy is trying to attack us. And this is the only way that I can get that enemy up off of me. If I have family, 
and me and my wife touching in the grand, praying for us. You know, because just like God moves, the enemy be moving too. When God stops, the enemy steady moving. When God tries to bless us, the enemy try to defer us. So we just have to always be together on everything, no matter what it is. No matter what the enemy try to throw at us, we have to always be obedient. And stick together. When God says pray, that's what we're supposed to do. God say sit down, sit down and rest. God say get up, get up. We got to be obedient and we got to always be in agreement and we got to always be in line. And I just want everybody just to pray for us. Yes. Amen. Yes. Hallelujah. Praise God. So yeah, this is my um oh, come, come, sister. <laughs> Us and hopefully God will honor this. This is where I live at. Okay, wow. Mm. What is Zoo it? owe you $4,146. Over tax. Mm-hmm. Over tax. Amen. And they're going to pay you. Amen. In the name Amen. of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Ooh, thank you, Lord. Yes. So this is my encouragement for you because you're getting ready to give because we trust God. Amen. So, and and um, this is my response to Brother Eric about um, the enemy. So, um, I'm not sure how long ago, but years ago, Man Network, um, y'all know for like 10 years, the Skillman Foundation was funding everything for Man Network. Our T-shirts, our logos, gas stipends, everything. They paid for everything. But during that process, they were telling us, they was training us and saying, at some point, you got to grow up and stand on your own two feet, right? And so um, we, there came a point in time where we didn't want to compete against other people who do, they, they don't do neighborhood patrols, but they were doing good work. And we didn't want to compete against them for money. So we just started to trust God, just like, just simply trust God to give us favor. And every step of the way the Lord has given us favor, long story short, um, two years ago, we started a security company because we were, you know, actually by the Holy Ghost. And then people kept asking us, like our city council kept asking us to do um, security. People kept asking us to do security. So it was pretty much a natural flow. They were paying us. It was giving, putting gas into the um, patrollers' cars. So we started a security company. And then the Lord blessed us with a contract. We got our first contract, I'm thinking like, what, five months ago, right? And then the, the Lord blessed us. And the same company called us in and said, well, we want to give you the whole shebang. They had a, already had security officers they had um everything right and they said we don't do security we don't do security but you do security and you do it well and so we want to give you our whole security team we want you to take them and train them and we're going to pay you to pay them then we're going to pay you your fee right Satan will never, ever outdo God. Amen. This is my response to you, Brother Eric. Never out, outdo God. So uh, <laughs> so last week, we went in, and we signed our second contract with them. And we got, so um, I think Monday of next week, we go in. We meet all of the new people. They, they find out that we're the new owners of the security company and that whole thing. And it changes hands. And God, like, um, this is going to be my point. So um, for maybe five months, we had the same people doing security at Durfee. And every now and then, if somebody can't come in, I go over there. Like today, I went over. But this late, one of my, our most faithful um, security officers, she works on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Saturday. She has something else to do. So at the end of March, that'll be her, you know, she'll be finished with us for a season, right? And so the Lord, because I know that man network and man security is not my idea, that it's ordained by God. God gave it to Bishop, right? I didn't even worry about it, right? And so I got two, I got one call that somebody wanted to cover the whole thing. And then Brother Eric came in tonight, said he'll cover the rest. So I got two people to work out, you know, the things. And I, I say that to say, let God do it. Amen. If we're obedient to God, if we're faithful to God, God said give and it shall be given unto us. We don't know how it's coming back. Maybe the Lord will triple your business overnight and you don't have to stress about anything. But God said if, we, if we're obedient to him, it shall come back and God will make sure that it happens. Amen. So make sure you're faithful to God. Make sure our focus 
focuses God. Our, our focus is seeing what God is doing and do what he's doing. Hear from God and do whatever God says to do. Amen? And so Satan, Brother Eric, Satan has already stopped. You got to read the book of Revelation. He's already stopped. Amen. When you got baptized in the Holy Ghost, and that's why God is allowing us to go into the season with these viruses, because God wants you to know the power of God on the inside of you. The Bible says, whatsoever we stop is stopped. Whatsoever we allow, we allow glory to God. And if you want to prosper, he's already made us to be the head only, above only and not beneath. And we just got to believe that the more we pray, the more we spend time with God, we'll see it. It's already there. Amen. Amen. So make sure as you give tonight that you're giving in obedience to whatsoever he says. Amen. 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 Come and give at this time. Hallelujah. Tell y'all something. After we got that second contract, we got a prophetic word from Apostle Bingham. I ain't gonna tell y'all the rest. It's a da da da. Y'all just hold on. <laughs> it's that da da da. So amen. Healthy people. Oh, come on, everybody. Hallelujah. Okay, somebody. Okay. Thank you, thank you. That's good. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Faithful God. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. And for those of you who are watching on social media, hello. <laughs> Hallelujah. And welcome to our Wednesday night service. Amen. You're so welcome. Um, Father, we just thank you for your goodness and mercy. Lord God, we thank you for your faithfulness. For you are faithful, you're faithful, you're faithful. And Father God, I thank you for blessing us. But your word says that the anointing destroys yokes, Lord God. So when we're not faithful, but yet we show up, I thank you that the anointing falls on us and it destroys whatever tries to keep us from being obedient. So Father God, I thank you that when we give, you can give back to us a good measure, press down, shake it together, and run it over. And again, we thank you for your faithfulness. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Hallelujah. Will you all please stand and let's receive our bishop. Hallelujah. Praise God. You may be seated. And I want to say hello and God bless you to everybody that is um, joining us tonight. And um, we thank God. We we had huge numbers of people watching us last night. We had a um, 
a lot of impact, and I don't know why except the Lord is blessing. And so wherever you are and whoever you are, thank you for joining us. Wherever we go, um, where people haven't seen us or whatever, they say, you know, I see you all the time um, on the social media. And so I praise God for impact uh, in the lives of people, and I thank God for you, for you, for you, for you, and for you. And uh, we came on a little bit late tonight. We had an extended uh, prayer time. And um, what we did was real interesting. And I, I just want to say that, you know, we were watching a, a, a service that had happened already. And we were praying along with them. You said, well, they already prayed. But see, what, what you have to always remember is that everything is now in the spirit. And so... Even though that they prayed a week ago, we came into agreement. So we came into agreement with eternity. We came into agreement in a place where there is no time. So if it was a week, it doesn't matter. It's, and it's, it's almost like concentric circles. We just added our agreement to all of the, the thousands of, of people that are praying and uh, believe in God. So amen. So the spirit realm is always now. And um, so we praise God for that. We want to continue to be vigilant. I, I got a scripture I want to share, and um, we're going to let you out on time tonight. Um, the president is speaking at 9 o'clock. We want to pray uh, for all of our government officials. Um, this is a, a tricky situation. And um, I remember I was sitting at the table and I'm going to just tell you about me. Um, I was sitting at the table when uh, Prophet, it was a Prophet LaFleur's wife. I know exactly who it was. And we were at Shiloh, and she said that. And I was like, well, well, that's strange, plagues. But I know that she's like a holy woman who has integrity and spends a lot of time with God. So I didn't, I didn't doubt it, but I didn't, take it the same way Val took it. I just um, kind of said, oh, okay. Um, but this is real interesting. And, you know, God always tells us in advance. I remember the first word that uh, Pastor Barb gave at Rejoice Detroit, and she talked about testing. And it was going to be a testing time. And, um, you know, because I'm, I'm a brat, um, I don't like tests. I don't, I don't like stuff like that, you know. That's just, I'm not, I'll never be one of them tribulation saints. I'll never be one of them people, um, you know, afflict me, God, for your glory. That's just, that's just not, that's not me. Um, but I believe that, that God is moving in this hour, and it is a great time for us to impact, uh, to impact the world as we see the glory of God manifested in the earth. I, I want to share a scripture from Isaiah 59, and I, I want to share, I got so much to share of uh, testimonies, um, but the Lord wants us to be encouraged that no matter what happens in the earth, um, he hasn't changed his mind about us. He, he hasn't changed his mind about his word. He hasn't changed his mind about what Jesus did on the cross. Things change. God doesn't change. And so as a believer, you have no reason to fall into this fear trap. Now, um, Isaiah 59. Hallelujah. Is that where I want to be? Yep, verse 19. Isaiah 59 and 19. So shall they fear the name of the Lord from the west and his glory from the rising of the sun. When the enemy shall come in like a flood, the spirit of the Lord shall lift up a standard against him. Amen? So again, when the enemy shall come in like a flood, the spirit of the Lord shall lift up a standard against him. I'll never forget that a long time ago, I heard R.W. Shambach preach this. And he said, in the original language, there were no commas. And so you could read this without the comma and make the emphasis where you want. And so it says here, when the enemy shall come in, 
You can put the comma right there. When the enemy shall come in, then like a flood, the spirit of the Lord shall lift up a standard against him. And so this is, this is a time. You know, you go to the next one, Isaiah 60 and verse 1. Arise, shine, for thy light is come. The glory of the Lord is risen upon thee. For behold, darkness shall cover the earth, and gross darkness the people. But the Lord shall arise upon thee, and his glory shall be seen upon thee. When everybody's panicking, and we're going to pray about that, um, because I don't know what the president is going to say. And I know some people, some of you watching, you may not like the president, but I tell you, you better pray for him. He's the only one we have. Maybe you want somebody to replace him, and that's your choice. That's your vote. That's literally your business. But until then, he's our president, and we need to cover our president in prayer. And uh, because this this thing is real interesting, it's, they you know canceling all kind of things. Harvard is uh, evacuating the campus. There's all kind of things going on. Sounds like one of them end time movies or something to me. And but you know when you have the Holy Ghost, you can have peace inside and not be concerned. You know. And um, so praise God. And, you know, I'm going to tell you something. Don't, don't play in this fear thing. If you get the sniffle or cough, don't be thinking it's the corona. I mean, you know, don't even think that. Don't even think that. You've been, you've been coughing all your life and sniffling all your life. Well, all of a sudden, it got to be the corona. Don't even play like that. Don't, don't go there. Don't, don't buy into the fear. Don't buy into the hype. Fear I believe it's kind of like faith, that it has the power to attract. And, um, and faith comes by hearing. And so whatever you hear and hear and hear and hear and hear, you'll start having faith in it. So let's keep our faith in the Lord and his promise. Amen? Hallelujah. So I just wanted to, to share that with you and encourage you. Now, I got a real encouraging message today from Germany. And... Um, some of y'all know our sister Gudrun there in Germany, and it was a picture of my book, and she said, your book is so timely right now, um, and it's so encouraging to have this powerful book at a time like this. And so, you know, people are tripping in Japan, Germany, wherever we talk to people, and I understand they were had a line going around Costco, um, Minister Copeland told me, so... I want us to pray against uh, people like really panicking and rioting and breaking in the stores. You know, there ain't going to be no hand sanitizer if they break in. If it ain't in there with us open, it ain't going to be in there when it's locked. Amen. So the people get crazy when they get afraid. And so we want to just be prayerful and um, we want to continue in prayer and just continue to stand in our covenant. Psalm 91, I, I believe it's a covenant. I I just believe it. It's a covenant, and I believe that we are protected. I don't think everybody is protected, but I believe everybody in covenant with God is protected. I believe that, and that's what Psalm 91 says, amen? And so I I just want to encourage you. Man, we had the mothers got happy in Bible study today. We we went over Psalm 91, and I mean, they they started, they got expressive. Uh, They got happy um, because it seems like some of them, had never really went through it like that. You know how you read something and not really look at what God is saying, you know. And so I want us to pray about that. And I want to just share one part in Psalm 91, something that the Lord showed me today, another aspect of things. And I want you to be encouraged. Um, Sister Gudrun is, is dealing with some symptoms. My cousin, Apostle Bracey, has some symptoms, and Ray, um, I don't know if she had symptoms, I just know she had on that mask, and there's different things about that mask, but in in this time, we have to stay in faith, and we also have to, like, be aware of facts, so the fact is, the most at-risk population, according to the medical people, are people over 80. Um, It's not really airborne it it's it's droplets that come from lung secretions so like if somebody has it and they cough on their hand and you touch their hand or something like that you know 
um, that's usually how it's tra transmitted. They don't know everything about this thing. And I've been really seeking the Lord about the spirit of infirmity and viruses for months now um, because they just seem like demons to me. They seem like demons. They look demonic under microscope, you know, um, when you look at them. And I believe that revelation and insight is going to come to the body of Christ. But I want to look at Psalm 91. And verse 4. It says, he shall cover thee with his feathers, and under his wings thou shalt trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. His truth. Now, a shield was big, and it would deal with things that, like, came from far away, like arrows. They would throw rocks. Sometimes they would light rocks on fire and catapult them. And the shield would protect from this. And an army could even lock shields and, like, create a wall. But that, that shield was, like, for big things. The buckler was a thing like the top of a garbage can, about that size. And they had it strapped to their wrist, and it was for up-close combat. And God wants us to know that his truth is our defense. His truth is our defense. So if something comes at you from afar, like what's in the media, that's a shield thing. You have your shield up to know that God's truth. So when you hear this, 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 you know, and sometimes you talk back to stuff. Say, but God said. But God said. Talk back to it. Talk back to it. I, I, I told the, uh, the news the other day, I said, I don't agree. <laughs> I don't agree with that. And I said, I don't believe it. I'll tell you something else you can say. I don't think so. What are you saying when you say I don't think so? Well, that's not how I think. I think according to God's truth, not, not nothing else. And, and you know, y'all pray for me. You know how I am. But I'm not going to base my anything on what somebody did in some mice. Studying mice. I'm not no mouse. I really don't understand that, but they study mice and figure out what's good for us. And sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. I, I don't know how that works, and I'm not talking against medical because we need to really pray for the whole medical profession and stuff like that. I was blessed to hear about how the Christians in Wunan, China, are going out, feeding people, praying for people, and God's healing them. Amen. You'll never hear that on CNN. You'll never hear that in, in the main media. But things are happening. God never leaves itself without a witness in the earth. But so that, that big stuff, but like hand to hand right up in your face, that's where your truth comes. Like so maybe you might get attacked with some symptoms. Or maybe, you know, somebody close to you might get attacked or something like that, right? So that's what that buckler is for, that, that buckler for up close contact. God says you are protected. By his truth, by his truth. His truth is our shield and our buckler. And so we have to just stay focused on what God said. Amen? Believe in God, even for provision, you know, believe in God to sustain you no matter what. People say, well, what if they run out of water? What if they run out of this? Well, you know, it's been times in the Bible where they ran out of stuff. Do you think God's going to run out of water? God's going to run out of anything? No. Well, then this is when we know that God is our source and our supply. And this is where it really, really pays to know that you belong to God, that you belong to Jesus Christ. This is another benefit. You know, David said in Psalm 103, bless the Lord, O my soul, forget not all his benefits. He forgives. Let's look at that. And then I'll stop. Yep, oh yeah. Psalm 103. I just want you to be encouraged tonight. And we're going to keep standing in agreement because we want to see this thing stop. Yes. Amen. Yes. 
it's a lot I don't understand about all of this. Um, Cause you know, a lot more people have died from the flu. And I share with you, um, the last funeral I did last week, that young man was 28 years old and the flu took him out, you know? So, and I had heard of people dying with the flu, but that was kind of close to home. He, his uh, family used to go to the, the old church, you know? And, um, He's a little little guy there, uh, Amen. But um, Hallelujah. But he was saved, so that's that's always good. But Psalm one hundred three says, "Bless the Lord, O my soul; all that is within me, bless His holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all His benefits. He forgiveth all thine iniquities; He healeth how many of thy diseases? Now watch verse four. Because we read three a lot. But watch verse four. Who redeemeth thy life from destruction. That's part of our benefits. He redeems us from destruction, crowns us with loving kindness and tender mercy, satisfies our mouth with good things so that our youth is renewed like the eagles. That's God's promise. Amen. So I want you to be encouraged tonight. If you're not saved, I really want to encourage you to give your life to Jesus Christ because I'm telling you, um, nobody knows what to do about this thing but God. Yeah. Hallelujah. And I'm, I'm just so glad to be on the Lord's side. Yeah. And I don't have any doubts. And, you know, you can say, what about this? What if this? What if? That's what that buckler is for. Yeah. What about what God said? His truth. His truth is our defense. Yeah. Glory to God. Yeah. So I want to encourage you, if you're not saved, pray with me right now. You say it's not that easy. Yes, it is. Because salvation is something that has been paid for. Amen. It's as easy as picking up a package. You ever went to the mail office now, you know, and pick up a package? Or go to Amazon Locker and pick up a package? Or go somewhere and pick up a package? It's already paid for. It's already yours. All you got to do is receive it. You signed for it to commit that you got it. That's what you're about to do now. You're committing to receive salvation and trust God to save your soul and to teach you and lead you in the way that you should go. So just listen to your heart once you get saved and do what God tells you to do. He's going to tell you to read the Bible. He's going to tell you to pray. He's going to tell you to find a good church home. Amen. Hallelujah. And just obey the Lord. Pray with me right now. Just say, Dear Lord, I come to you just as I am. I ask you to forgive me of all of my sins. Cleanse me from all unrighteousness. I receive Jesus Christ as my only Savior, as my only Lord, as my only hope for a home in heaven. Come into my life, Lord Jesus, and make me new from the inside out. And with your help, I'll serve you all the days of my life. Hallelujah. If you prayed that prayer, let us know. Amen. And we'll, we'll send you some information that can help you. And we'll even help you find a church home wherever you are, wherever you're watching. Amen. Because I'm sure they got one. Amen. It'll be right. And we praise God. Well, we love you so much. And um, praise God. I thought we had a good time tonight. And I love the presence of the Lord. You know, I could just worship all day. I, I could just, I really could. Amen. But praise God. Hallelujah. So, look, we love you. We'll see you next time. Um, don't forget to pray for the president. Father, we pray for the president. We pray for our nation. We pray that you give him wisdom and guidance and all that are working on every level of government, all the doctors and the, the scientists and the people that are trying to find a vaccine. Lord, anoint them to do it in the name of Jesus. Glory to God. And, Father, we just thank you. We pray against panic. We pray against looting and rioting. We pray against the spread of the spirit of fear, and we pray against the spread of this virus in the name of Jesus. And, God, we give you glory, and we thank you in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Well, listen, the devil is defeated. God is exalted, and Jesus is Lord. Amen.